Well, folks, we've got action and product from as far afield as Sweden and China on this week's EMBN show. Yeah, as well as all the action, we've got the regulars, we've got the bike vault, we've got where in the world and much more. Yes, and we'll be wrapping things up with some wrap. Nice. Now, as many of you might know, I'm not a massive fan when it comes to hardtail EMTBs. And the reason for that is that these old bones simply don't like it when it comes to really nasty, horrible off-road rocks and roots. And I simply prefer to have the cushioning that a full suspension EMTB provides. Now, having said that, I think you'll all agree there is something aesthetically pleasing about a well-proportioned, well put together hardtail, such as this 504 from British brand White. Now the bike, this particular bike comes with 27.5 wheels. Um, the color, I love that color, it's called Matte Diesel. Um, comes in three sizes, extra small, small and medium, which kind of confuses me really. So I'll have to ask the guys in Ace in a minute what the deal is with that. Uh, but the heart of this bike is the Bosch Performance CX motor, 85 Newton meters of torque, uh, and an internal 504 watt hour battery. Now, because it's a hardtail, it's quite likely being a hardtail, you're gonna get a lot of range out of this bike. Uh, the wheel set is a mix of WTV rims and DT spokes with white own hubs on there. We've got some forecaster tires from Maxxis, reasonably low profile, hard compound tires, which again is going to aid to that range of the bike. Up front, we've got 120 mil travel from the RockShox Gold 35 fork, uh, and a mixture of parts from white. We've got an 800 mil bar, 35 mil stem, and check this out, you've got a, uh, a dropper post there from white, it's the drop-in post from white with a white stem on there. As I mentioned, I think the proportions and the angles of this bike look really cool. It's long, it's low, and it's slack, which means that when you go off-road, it's gonna be a pretty stable bike. I think, in general, the sort of shape and purpose of this bike does lend it to kind of fire road and single track riding. But nevertheless, you probably will be able to do some seriously steep hills because of that uh, Bosch uh, fourth generation motor. Like I said, 85 Newton meters of torque, you've got the uh, EMTB mode, which allows you to have that extended boost to help you get up to those steep banks. So I think overall, it's, it's a really nice package. But as I mentioned, what baffles me is that it only comes in three sizes, extra small, small and medium with 27.5 wheels. I'm just thinking that white are missing a trick here. So I'm just gonna have a word to the guys in at Ace Cycles about that. What on earth are you doing? Um, well, I, no, what are you doing? I mean, why have white only made a hardtail with 27.5 wheels and three small sizes? Well, actually that's not the case. They have made um, the bike from extra small to medium in a 27.5, but then they do a medium to extra large, which goes up to a 29er version. Ah, so would that be what I've got in the box there? That is exactly what's in that box. <laughs> right. <laughs> so are we talking the same spec, same price? Because that, that'll be, will that be a 504 or a different model then? So from medium to extra large, it's actually called a 505, ah, an right. E505. Same price? Same price, yeah. Same spec? Yes. Yeah, so 11 speed GX. Yeah. Um, and I guess the good thing with 11 speed GX is that when it comes to replaceable parts, they're not that expensive, are they? True. Yeah. Yeah. And um, wheel size, different wheel size on the, on the 505, right? Yeah, so you can have a extra small up to a medium yeah. in the 504, which would be the 27.5. And then they do another medium yeah. to extra large which would be the 29er version. Right, okay. It's a cool looking bike, isn't it? It's lovely, yeah. Is, am I right, this, this, is, this is the matte diesel, right? Matte diesel, right. yes. So it comes in a couple of other colors as well, doesn't it? It, it comes does. comes in slate and, and a blacky color. Um, thanks, Amy. Uh, do you know what? I'm not a massive fan of hardtails. What about yourself? Oh, full squish, yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But. But you know what, I mean, it's, it's a great price point, it's a great way to get into e-mountain biking, or mountain biking in general, isn't it? It really is, yeah. If, if this is going to be your first transition into mountain biking and also e-bikes, yeah, perfect. Yeah, great. So there you go, folks. Uh, thanks to Amy for joining us. And uh, 
put in us right when it comes to the sizing and the wheel size of the new 504 and 505 from White. Okay, time now to uh, take the wraps off some of the news this week. And uh, we're gonna begin with some wrap. What is it about wrapping bikes? Wrapping bikes. Well, I think obviously e-bikes are super expensive, aren't they? As we all know. And I think- Well, I think not all of them. Well, some are less some expensive. Are, yeah. so there is a perception that e-bikes are expensive, but you can still get bikes like the Decathlon for exactly. you know, 16 99 But I think it's really good to protect your investment at the end of the day, because it's going to add to that resale value. And obviously it is pretty harsh conditions sometimes transporting them. And the areas that we ride our bikes in can be pretty harsh. And I think my paint definitely gets quite a beat in. I don't know about yours, Steve. No? <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes. And transporting <laughs> them as well. My legs do. <laughs> can I, I mean, get wrap on my legs instead? <laughs> but I mean, transporting the bikes definitely take a bit of a hammer in. And this stuff from Ride Wraps is set to put that all to rest. And they're doing universal bike kits, starting at 60 pounds to protect uh, your bikes is going to protect all those areas, the down tube, chain stays, and of course, everywhere, basically going to get some damage on those bikes. And uh, Is that yeah. what it's about then? Is it about protector? I thought, mm. I thought it was just a show thing. I thought it was just to get different colours. I, I, I genuinely thought that's what it was for. Really? Yeah, they do do custom kits, so you can add a bit of colour to these bikes. Yeah. Um, but a lot of these are actually just clear, so you will retain that bike's natural kind of look and that paint job. So. Pretty cool, uh, and the great stuff about this is that it will actually heal. If you put a minor marker or tear in there, if you put it into natural sunlight, once it heats up, it actually heals itself. Um, and the other great part about it is if you've got it on the down tube, actually it's got a low energy surface material on there, so mud won't stick to there, it, it literally falls off. So this winter rides and that cleanup process becomes a lot more. And uh, of course, for 60 quid. Yeah. Have That's you considered great. having a wrap, Chris? <laughs> I'd like to do a wrap. Maybe you should do an EMBN wrap, right? <laughs> <laughs> I meant you personally. <laughs> yeah. uh, moving on now to uh, news from Sweden. Mm -hmm. And Olins have come out with an RX F38 fork. Mm -hmm. uh, wider stanchion forks do seem to be all the rage these days. Uh, now, uh, I was lucky enough to go to see Olins about eight years ago, Chris. Really? Obviously, today mm -hmm. they are, I think, they're actually not the reigning world down on champions, but they certainly won quite a few titles since they've introduced uh, their mountain bike range. Yeah. Uh, top quality mm -hmm. uh, manufacturing here from the guys over in. Um, Oh, Stockholm. It is Stockholm. So there you go. Uh, Chris, tell us, talk to us for some of the details uh, yeah, so, of the RXF. So this is essentially their... Right, actually, it's an RFX. Sorry. <laughs> so this is essentially a slimmed down version of their downhill fork, the DH38 fork. Obviously, it says, shares the same stanchion. It's just a little bit shorter travel and in a single crown too. Now, these are designed to be ridden with 29-inch wheels solely. So they're not actually offering a 27.5 option with this fork. Uh, adjustable travel, 160 to 180 mil. Uh, and of course, it's e-bike rated. And we're seeing this bike actually become an OE fork on bikes from Thok and Mondraker at the Talk. moment. Tok. Tok, sorry. Tick. And it was actually only OE, but they decided to release this to the public uh, as a general sale fork as well. Uh, it weighs in at 2,320 grams. And the cost, well, I actually haven't got a cost for it because it's pretty fresh in the market, but- It's going to be, it's going to be what? It's going to probably be 15 to 17 euros, right? Yeah, well, the downhill fork is 1.8, I believe, and the, the yeah. fork below it is 1.6. So yeah, I think we're talking around sort of one and a half to yeah. 17.50 kind of bracket. But as I say, details haven't been released on that at the moment. So, Good yeah. stuff from the Swedes, mm -hmm. fantastic. Uh, now, uh, recently it was the hard line, mm -hmm. but the winner of that event, Bernard Kerr, mm -hmm. uh, soon after was back on his EMTV, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah, I think the amount of time that Bernard's been spending on that pivot shuttle has been pretty mind blowing, to be fair. Although a lot of the content I see from him seems to be on that, and it looks to have paid off, obviously winning hard line with that race winning run. And just messing around, this is really refreshing to see. I think it was a few days after Hardline, sliding around in the grass, you know, with his dog. And uh, yeah, just cool stuff from Bernard as always. Yeah. Uh, so there you go, folks. Uh, keen to know what you think about wraps and also the custom wrap colorways uh, on, on EMTVs. I do see, uh, seem to see a lot of them. Yeah. Send us your pics in of your bikes with your wraps on there. Okay, guys, it's now time to discuss eight panel and five panel. Uh, not being a cool character, I don't actually know what the hell Chris is on about. Eight panel and five panel. So we've got some new headwear in the EMBN shop. We've got the beanies in there and of course the cap. So if you're into protecting your head, 
looking cool. Check those uh, new hats and caps out in the shop. And of course, our new race jerseys, t-shirts, hats, stickers, you name it. It is all in the merch shop. And it's a great way of representing us out on the channel. And we've got some examples just here, look folks. Yeah, nice, yeah. We've got the plum and the black. And nice. the black is actually a sweatshirt. Well, what have we got coming up on the channel in the next seven days? Well, on Friday, Chris has got a video, six things not to do if you're new to EMTV. Mm -hmm. Off the top of my mind, I want to think if you're new to it, I'd probably say, don't forget to tighten your nets. Don't forget to tighten your nets, that's definitely a good one, but there's loads of things I in mean, there. I mean, nets might be tight in the first place, but whatever, don't forget to tighten them if you've got a new bike. So on Sunday, we've got a cool video coming out that Steve has done. Are two batteries better than one? What's this video about, Steve? Is it cool? You haven't seen it yet. Mm. You haven't sounds, seen it. Sounds What's it about? What's it about? I'll tell you what it's about. We've seen a massive move in the direction of larger capacity batteries in the past six months, but are larger capacity are larger capacity batteries better? Or can you actually do with a, a smaller one such as 500 watt hours? Well, in this video, I take a 500 up against, a, a two 500s actually, up against a 630 uh, and look at the pros and cons. And I think it depends ultimately. It depends on your bike, the type of riding, and a few other factors which I discuss and look at in that video. Now, a few weeks ago, we featured the prototype Starling Steel EMTB uh, full suspension on the channel with the Free Flow Technologies motor on there, 65 newton meters of torque. Uh, smaller capacity battery in the down tube. Um, some very cool features on that bike, and since then, I've actually been riding it to uh, give you guys some feedback on it. Uh, but some great quests, uh, good, great comments from you guys. Uh, John F. Uh, Chris, what does he say? He says, full he said, yeah, full circle. So it's uh, full circle going steel, aluminium, carb uh, carbon, then back to steel. So it kind of is that. I don't think it will go full everyone to steel. I think we see a massive advances in e-bike technology and I don't know if it will go back full circle yeah. for sure, but I think it's definitely the, good to have some yeah. different materials there, the great, sure. The great thing about steel is that it's a very forgiving material. Um, a, a lot, I'm not saying all carbon fibre can be a bit harsh, but certainly some of them can be. And when you ride a steel bike, it's a, it's a, it really is refreshing mm. to get you know less feedback through your body. Yeah. Sure. Um, and then a Vigo says, so excited to see the next generation mid-drive technology. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what Scottish brand Free, free Flow uh, do with the motor. Um, it's it's it is super compact. If you think about it, Chris, it's kind of it's in many ways it's similar to the TQ motor, isn't it? But yeah. it's a lot lot. Oh, well, actually, can I say this? It it looks a lot lot lighter. Put it that way. <laughs> um, and uh, Adventure Wales says uh, fantastic to see British company jumping on the e-bike bandwagon. Mm -hmm. The motor sounds amazing. Yeah, it's, it's full of tech that bike. It is exciting to move forward. I think uh, there's quite a few British brands out, you know, here. So the more we see of those guys getting involved, I think it's a good. I thing. can't think of any more. Curtis. Curtis. Orange. I don't think Brian bike. Curtis is going to be making an EMTV uh, in the know, near future. I've heard movements possibly. <laughs> we shall see. <laughs> uh, hey guys, thanks for your comments and it's uh, great you get involved in, in the videos on the channel. Folks, I'm so excited about this week's uh, climb ride of the week. It's from the Filipinos uh, MTV Association here in the UK. Boys, you've been on a ride, haven't you? Yeah, it looks like uh, Pinoy is at a, you know, is a birthday day out and he's had a huge ride up to the top of the hills and the Malverns. Now, you've probably been out there, Steve, haven't you, to this spot? To the Malverns? I've uh, not been to that particular spot, but mm -hmm. obviously the Malverns is a fantastic place to go. Tracy Mosley territory mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, I'm just loving the ghost bike as well. I'm it's a big, cool, big it? fan of that ghost bike. It looks good. Really, I, I rode that, Christ, it's been four years ago now, I rode the ghost mm -hmm. out in um, the Dolomites. But yeah. uh, guys, great to see you having some good fun together. Yeah, he's having loads of fun, isn't he? Ride. Getting the dab out on the top of that monument, look. Yeah, loving it. Great shot there. Keep all that content coming into us here on EMBN. Use our upload service to get any photos and videos. Where have you been there, folks? Well, I'll tell you where you've been. This is an amazing shot. Yes, a morning wood action uh, and, and a shot which actually I, I think I'd like to have used as the a thumbnail for the channel this week. Mm, it's, I mean, look at it, Chris. One, isn't it? it is stunning. Um, it's Richard um, on top of Jim Donnelly Trail. That is like, wow, Blows wow. Mind, isn't it? Yeah, way up in the clouds, California on a you know morning like that. Can't be beaten, right? Yeah, just up above the woods there. And, um, 
Oh, moving on to some fields. Mm. This is in on the South Downs Way, Tok MIG 2.0. Different bit of different, a yeah. different different landscape. I think look that, at this, Chris. Look at this. It puts it in perspective, doesn't it? The difference in the terrain here. Dominican oh, Republic. Nice. Oh my God! This is Jose or oh, Jose? Josie? Do you know what? I'm now, I'm, I'm, I must apologise because Jose Hamida is always joking to me. Is it Jose? Is it Josie? Is it Jose? I don't know how to pronounce. Anyway, it is awesome. Yeah, Absolutely it's awesome. Show, isn't it? Check out this one. This is from Carlos. He's got a Sense Impulse e Trail Evo and he's in Brazil. I don't know how to pronounce that one, Steve. I don't know. But I, I know what I do know is that the uh, final shot from Where in the World this week is Adam and is in Yu Yang's Regional Park in Victoria, Australia and uh, on the Merida there. Mm. Nice bit of grippy rock there, Adam, by the look to it, I have to say. Yes, I just I love where in the world. It just goes to show how widespread e-bikes are at the minute all over the world and the epic adventures you're getting up to as well. So yeah, keep them coming, loving it. We got some uh, fresh bikes in the bike vault this week. This is, I think, the first time I've seen a Trek E-Caliber. Yeah, so this is uh, Tyler's Trek E-Caliber out in Tyler State Park as well. So in Tyler, Texas. So a lot of Tyler's going on in this. Uh, first ride at the state park, following us into the practice, uh, just stopping on this bridge for a first break. So I think that's an interesting bike, isn't it? It's 60 mil travel that bike, isn't it? So mm -hmm. very short travel e-bike, um, Fizur motor and stuff on there. So interesting and definitely the first one we've had here, here on the show. So I think that's got to be a super nice. Uh, now moving on to a brace of bikes here. This mm -hmm. is um, a Levo 2017 and a Vado. So both specialized bikes, mm -hmm. uh, two different ways of doing it. And uh, I, I haven't ridden both of them, they, they are. You have, haven't you? You rode awesome. that one, the Vado, up a mountain, yeah, I remember. Yeah, I did. Uh, this is Peter. I think that is super nice, Peter. Uh, oh, look at this. This is interesting. I a like the triple. way they're propping these bikes up. Like, so we've got like a, a triple triangle here of bikes. And so. it's in Stourbridge, but... Um, phew, Looks like a I guarantee quarry you. I guarantee you that Lewis will have been to race car cycles or all, all the specialized bikes. Definitely. So uh, out for a quick raz and come across this uh, epic quarry. I think it's a super nice shot. Yeah. Uh, next up is Jason, uh, Trek Powerfly in mm -hmm. Devil's Den State Park. I like, I like that shot. It almost looks really like it's got a retro sort of filter on there. It looks like a shot out of the 80s, but obviously it's not. Mm -hmm. I think it's a nice shot, but this next shot is yeah. definitely a super nice shot. It shows. There's great light on the bike. This is uh, uh, Philips Cube Sarah Action Team 160 in the Cotswolds. That's uh, Philip, that is 100% super nice shot. Sure. And the next one is pretty clean. This is Mikael in uh, Tampere in Finland on a Mondraker Chaser 29. I didn't know they did a Chaser. No, not die. But, clean looking um, bike there. It looks an uh, epic area to ride. Possibly it looks more cold. Possibly more suited to a fat bike, but um, yeah, fair play for getting out there on that one. I think that's got to be a super nice. It's a well, super right? nice. And there's a nice shot from Christopher and it's 2019 Viva in the Peak District. And then finally, a golf course shot uh, is Branco. Mm -hmm. Hard bike all mountain, Slovenia. Um, hole in one. I remember actually. Is it a hole in one? I think so. It's oh, here we go. I remember. I remember actually riding a golf course back in the day. I know you shouldn't, but it was frozen in the winter months. And oh, the jumps you could get out of those frozen bunkers was amazing. But it doesn't look like Branco's been doing that. He's just cruising past. We, by the way, I don't recommend riding on golf we courses. We don't recommend or encourage it. <laughs> but actually, just a bit we, of fun. We actually downright condemn it. <laughs> but what Not are you that thinking? I've played golf ever. But <laughs> what are you thinking for bike of the week? There's some strong entries, I think. Uh, up I, to you. I like that triple triangle of uh, triple. specialized bikes here from triple Lewis. Triple triangle. Uh, out in Starbridge in the UK. I think that takes it for me. Epic day out, looks like you've had there. And of course, it's a quarry, so why would it not get bike of the week? But that is it for this week's show, isn't it? Yeah, it's a wrap. And so guys, let us know your thoughts, as I mentioned earlier, on wrapping your bike. Do you do it for protection or do you do it for the looks of your bike and maybe increase the value of them? It's yeah. a really interesting topic. And Appreciate don't forget to send uh, the images of your freshly wrapped bikes into the show. Yeah, I'd love to see that. And also get involved in the comments box down below. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's show. And we shall see you next week.